What's going on guys, my name is Omega, welcome back to another Apex Legends video. So today I'm going to be bringing you guys another episode of the most overpowered things ever released into Apex Legends. Now in the first episode I kind of missed a few things, I didn't get everything or talk about everything that I wanted to, but today we have a ton more stuff that was just absolutely broken when it was first added into Apex Legends. Let me know if you guys remember any of this and drop a comment down below. I'm just curious to know what you guys think is the most underpowered or weakest thing ever added into Apex Legends. I'll probably be doing a video on that sometime in the future, so if you guys have any ideas or anything you remember, make sure to drop a comment down below. Also, I just wanna let you guys know that in this video, I will be using some clips from other YouTubers just because I don't have gameplay for every single thing that I'm gonna be talking about. So the link to every YouTuber whose clips that I will use will be down in the description below. But let's get right into this very first thing, which I'm surprised I completely forgot about in the last video, but that is the charge rifle from season three. So when the charge rifle was first introduced as like the very first hit scan sniper in Apex Legends, it was insanely broken and got a couple of big nerfs like the week that it actually came out. So when the charge rifle came out, you could actually put on a purple extended energy mag, which would give the charge rifle seven shots before you actually had to reload. So this was before sniper ammo was a thing. So you were able to actually use energy mags and the extended energy mag with the charge rifle. It was absolutely crazy being Able to do seven shots before reloading and the other just insane part about the charge rifle is that it didn't have any damage fall off up until 300 meters so if you shot someone at 300 meters you would still do the same damage as if you shot them at 100 meters this was later very nerfed it's just because being able to snipe someone with a hit scan sniper from 300 meters and not have any damage fall off was just way too overpowered it was nerfed the week after to only 250 meters and then a week later again and it was nerfed to 150 meters. So charge rifle is now kind of like an okay weapon. I don't think it's the very best, but definitely when it first came out, it was insane, man. So let me know if you guys remember the charge rifle from season three, but this next thing is a glitch that I actually had no idea ever existed. And if you guys had played Apex Legends in the first five days of it coming out, you might have experienced this glitch or seen someone using it. I guess it's more of an exploit, but Pathfinder had an exploit when Apex Legends was released where he could actually scale buildings like Revenant without using his grapple. Well, his grapple was part of the glitch. For some reason, if you were climbing a building and then firing off your grapple straight up into the air without attaching on anything, you would literally just straight climb up the building without even using your grapple. And it wasn't really the most overpowered thing. It was more just kind of like a weird exploit. But at that time, you didn't even need to use your grapple to get on top of buildings. You could save it to either get into or out of fights. So that's why I wanted to include it on this list. I thought it was pretty funny and I actually had zero idea that this was ever a thing even though I started playing Apex on day one. But the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the OG Spitfire from Season Zero. So back in the day, the Spitfire was actually probably one of the most overpowered weapons in the game. I'd still say it's a pretty good gun, but it definitely doesn't compare to what it was, you know, about a year ago. So the Spitfire, when you had a purple extended heavy mag on it, you could actually shoot 60 bullets in one magazine instead of the 55 that it is right now. It wasn't a huge change, but those extra five bullets plus the increase damage that the Spitfire had made it just a terrifying weapon. Back in the day, the Spitfire did 20 damage for every single bullet. This was later reduced to 18, around the same time that the uh, purple extended mags were nerfed. So you could only have 55 bullets in a magazine and the bullets only did 18 damage per bullet. But it was still, dude, just so crazy. The Spitfire, you didn't need to have any kind of accuracy whatsoever. If you could just put in like 10 bullets into someone, they would basically just die instantly. And since you had 60 bullets in one magazine, Magazine, hitting 10 of those was definitely not hard at all. So the Spitfire used to be insanely overpowered. But moving on to the next one, this is the Longbow with heavy ammo from Season 2. So back in the day, you know, like I mentioned before, sniper ammo wasn't always in the game. The Longbow used to use heavy ammo. And the Longbow kind of had a period of time where at first it wasn't that great. And then it got an update on April 16th that just made the Longbow absolutely insane. So this update gave the Longbow a fire rate of 1.6 shots per second. Before that, it was only at 1.2, so that was a pretty big increase for a semi-auto sniper rifle. They had also reduced the leg shot damage reduction 
reduction from 25% to 10%. So technically that means that if you shot someone in the leg, you would do 15% more damage than you did before. And the skull piercer attachment gave this gun a 2.25 headshot multiplier. And I think right now the skull piercer gives you like a two times multiplier. So it was a super overpowered weapon. People were running like the longbow and the R301. And all you had to do was just hit one or two shots with the longbow, take out the R301 and just absolutely massacre someone, which is a good transition into the next most overpowered thing, which was the gold R301 or just the R301 in general from season one. So the R301 now, like when you compare it to what it was back in the day is just kind of a garbage weapon. I mean, the R301 is still really good, but back in the day, it literally had no vertical or horizontal recoil. This wasn't added until around August 13th when a patch actually came out that increased the vertical and horizontal recoil, as well as slightly increased the recoil pattern randomness. So back in the day, you could literally just melt someone's face off from like 100, 200 meters away, no problem. It didn't require really any skill to use the R301, which is why I think probably a lot of people use it and it was one of the most popular weapons back in the day. It's still a really good weapon, but with the increased vertical and horizontal recoil, it's a lot harder to use and a lot harder to control. So R301 used to be insane. Now it's kind of an okay weapon, but you guys saw in the clip how little recoil you have with this gun. Like I kind of wish they would revert this change a little bit because I do think that the randomness of the R301 is a little too random. I'm not really too sure how to control this gun all the time, so I think it could use a few more changes in the future. Now another thing that I thought was insanely overpowered but also really fun to use was grenades back in like season one through three or it was possibly two. But if you guys remember back in the day, you actually could have like a ton more grenades than you could now. Right now in Apex Legends, you can only have one grenade and it doesn't stack. But when Apex first came out, you could stack two or three grenades on top of each other, which meant that at the end of the game, when the circle was really small, no one was shooting their gun anymore. People were just chucking grenades and getting super easy wins. So at that time, Watson was kind of like a, a really good legend to use because of her ultimate, which would destroy incoming grenades. But the fact that you could just spam so many grenades and keep so many grenades in your inventory made people rage and people hate the game and a lot of people thought that Apex was just gonna die out during that time. I mean, I'm sure, you know, people think that all of the time, but I think that it was a really huge turning point when grenades became unstackable and you could only have one in your inventory. Especially now, I only carry maybe like one or two grenades when I play Apex, so I can definitely see this change has made a huge effect in the gameplay over the past couple of months. Moving on to uh, a legend, actually. This is the first legend that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, but if you guys remember back in the day, I wanna talk about Bangalore real quick because Bangalore actually used to be a very strong legend. I wouldn't say that she was the most like overpowered legend or you know, even just overpowered in general throughout her time in Apex Legends, which has been forever. But back in the day, Bangalore's double time passive gave her a 40% speed bonus. Now, since then, it has been reduced from 40% to 30%, but uh, just kind of a little comparison. Right now, Octane, when he uses his stim, runs at 40%. So this was very overpowered for Bangalore, because as you guys know, her passive triggers every time someone shoots at her. So she was basically getting an updated Octane stim every time someone shot at her and she would literally just zoom off the map man in a trail of dust nothing would be left behind her she was insanely fast and a little too overpowered uh, it wasn't until around March 19th when Bangalore was actually nerfed and her passive was only going to give her a 30% speed bonus. But finally, the last thing I want to talk about in today's video is the L-Star when it was released. Now, the L-Star, as you guys remember, released as a care package weapon. Back in the day, the Devotion was still just a regular weapon, so the L-Star was kind of like what the Devotion is now. It did 21 damage per shot with a 12 rate of fire. The damage was later reduced from 21 to 19 with a bunch of different changes added to the L-Star. Uh, one of the big changes was that they made the L-Star overheat instead of having to reload it. It was super overpowered when you could just reload the L-Star because 
the overheating made it so that you couldn't just spray and pray with the L-Star. You kind of had to burst your shots and be a little bit more careful with it, but just reloading the gun allowed you to just spray wherever you wanted to, and it would do an absolute ton of damage. So I think people were really annoyed when the L-Star came out. Luckily, Respawn was able to fix that in a couple of weeks, and now obviously we have the L-Star as a regular weapon. But that concludes today's video. I definitely want to hear down below if there's anything else I missed from this list. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got most of the overpowered stuff that has been added into Apex. Anything else would just kind of be stretching the truth, but let me know down in the comments below what do you guys think is the most underpowered thing ever added into Apex. Thank you guys again for watching this video. I will see you guys all next time. Have a great day. Peace out.